So, another random video. And this time, I want to talk about Fortnite. And how specifically this season has been one of the worst experiences I have ever had in any game. Somehow not even the worst in Fortnite, but it's definitely bottom three. My bottom three seasons used to be Season X, Chapter 4, Season 3, and Chapter 2, Season 6. And now Season X isn't bottom three anymore, somehow. Like, one of the most notoriously unbalanced, least fun, broken-ass metas to play ended up being more enjoyable than this current season. Which really just goes to show how terribly everything was done and wrecked. Now, one thing I did want to clear up about this beforehand is... This is going to be purely gameplay. When it comes to everything else... Yeah. Battle Pass was average as shit. The story, I don't really give a fuck about. The gameplay is my only real determining factor when ranking Fortnite seasons... And this has to be some of the least fun gameplay, least enjoyable gameplay, that I've ever had to sit through. And the only reason why I ended up playing so much of it is just because I wanted to get to that level 200 without spending more money than just the $10 for the normal battle pass. Because it has become absolutely ridiculous how everything happened in this season. And keep in mind, this I forgot whether I already said this or not, but this is coming from a mostly casual player who has some interest in watching competitive but not playing it myself. And another thing to clarify, I retired from builds about half a year ago, so this is mostly, at least for the more casual aspect, going to apply to no builds. Now, from the start of the season... It was already incredibly broken and annoying. Because you immediately started with the cars, the nitro fists, and the nitro splashes. And fun fact, uh, the nerf that everyone talks about the nitro splashes having, where it only does 90 to builds, or to structures in general, not just builds, but that only applies in builds mode. Because in no builds, it'll still do 300 to anything that you crash into. So let's say someone in the top build or top roof of a building. Now you can just run all over at the bottom floor and knock him down. But the big issue this entire time, cars. They were the big thing that was incredibly infuriating. Some of the most unbalanced shit Epic has ever added. And it got to a point where multiple of my friends had thrown their controllers and I had outright just quit out of nowhere multiple times, which genuinely has never happened before. Yes, Chapter 2 Season 6 and Chapter 4 Season 3 were overall less enjoyable slightly, but the losses weren't nearly as frustrating and infuriating Due to the metas being less and inherently fucked and broken. And even after the nerfs of the cars, at least in zero builds, they were still broken as fuck. Because the nerfs didn't do much at all. Yeah, the boss cars no longer regenerate. Oh, what's that? You have three repair torches? Okay, then you can still do the same shit. And people always like to bring up. Oh, but the EMP grenades. Oh, but the boogie bombs earlier. Oh, but the magneto gauntlets. And I honestly didn't mind the boogie bombs. A lot of casuals were saying that they were way too broken and that they ruined the season. They really didn't ruin the season. Most casuals just loved the season because it gave free ones to anyone who didn't have a lot of skill. I'm not going to lie. And one of the funniest things I always see is people saying, Oh, just adapt. Move better. It's a car coming at you at over 80 miles per hour. 
that can move faster than you can, including while turning. And you say, oh, just move away. Oh, just don't spam build. Like some of the casual players, oh, just adapt. The way that casual players have been trying to shit on competitive players is hilarious because, oh, just adapt. Oh, you mean what they've been doing since the inception of competitive play or these people who know more about the game than anyone else and are better at it than anyone else have been doing and that even they're unable to because of how frankly terribly unbalanced it is? Like, holy shit, this season was awful gameplay-wise. God damn, there was nearly nothing redeeming about it because, keep in mind, I'm not including Reload for this. Reload is amazing. I fucking love the state Reload's in right now. But that does not forgive the frankly horrid state that was the entirety of this season in both builds and no builds. It's so unbalanced that it makes... That it would make something like Zacian Crowned in Sword and Shield meta dropping down to Yu Yu look balanced somehow. Which is baffling because if you've played Pokemon, especially competitive Sword and Shield, you would know Zacian Crowned is the most broken Pokemon to ever fucking exist, specifically in Sword and Shield. And somehow it makes that look balanced? Like. One of the most frustrating things as well, Epic's changes to try to nerf broken things, they either make it a, an incredibly small nerf, so it barely does anything, like the very slight damage reduction by like two on the car turrets, or they, instead of actually nerfing it, introduce something else that's completely broken in its own right, like the Magneto Gauntlets. And people always make the movement argument like they do with snipers. My counter-argument to that, if someone has good enough aim, it doesn't matter how good your movement is, they are going to hit you. And we've seen this time and time again. Look at Thomas HD. He is one of the best snipers, and not even just snipers, he has some of the best aim and has had some of the best aim since chapter fucking one of Fortnite. You see people trying to change up their movement and be unpredictable all the time. Thomas HD still hits his shots, still hits his snipe, still hits most of the shit that he goes for. Because he just has that good aim. So it doesn't matter how good your movement is if they have good enough aim. You're relying on someone else to have poor aim, which is... Really, just people trying to ignore that aren't nearly as frustrating as a lot of the people defending the more broken aspects of this season, though. And that is one of the things that frustrates me about Epic as a company in general. Their whole broken checks broken fallacy. I know it's completely different from tiering in Pokemon, which is an example I gave earlier and something that I have personal experience in, now being the co-leader of the Pokabilities tier, but balancing decisions shouldn't just be about, oh, this thing will look less broken if we add another broken thing in. That's not how it should work. And it never should have been how it should have worked. Because the Magneto Gauntlets just ended up being completely overpowered by themselves when they were introduced. And the Shield Breaker EMPs that would get rid of, or not get rid of cars, but that would disable the turrets and grenade launchers... They were just completely obsolete after that. Which, yay, another item that originally had a purpose but then got it taken away because something significantly more broken came in. And then the, I forgot the name of the sniper. It wasn't a bad change. I will say that right now. I did mention before how... A lot of people try to defend snipers and Magneto Gauntlet shit like that. But snipers in a casual meta are enjoyable. In a competitive meta, absolutely not. I don't want to see snipers in a competitive meta. But in a casual meta, they aren't nearly as insanely broken 
even though something like the Magneto Gauntlets are. And there is a pretty big reason for that. The Magneto Gauntlets have five entire counts. I, I can't really say ammo, but you can huck the chunks of metal and rock five times before you're out of it, and it still does things like prevents fall damage, sends you further with the uh, nitro hoops, which I liked that aspect, but the attacking aspect was so annoying. For once, I didn't mind the defending aspect because I felt that it was well enough balanced, but just being able to spam and hurl that thing was insanely broken. Now, don't get me wrong, there were a few good things about the season. I, Like I said, I did enjoy having a sniper in the game again, and shockingly enough, I really ended up enjoying the Enforcer AR and liking how they brought the combat AR back. A lot of people say that they would have preferred if the Warforged would have stayed in, but honestly, I can see their argument, but in my opinion, you can't really have both the Warforged and the combat without one completely outclassing the other, because they both fill in that role of high-firing, relatively low damage compared to some of the ARs that we've had in the past in that AR category. So, yeah, I don't really mind that switch out too much. The TAC AR I do wish was buffed a bit, even if it's just like 2-3 damage. The Thunder Burst is as amazing as ever, although I wouldn't quite consider it broken, I wouldn't consider any of the shotguns that we've had broken. Uh, the reintroduction of the Enforcer AR was something that I hated at first, but I also now believe that that was probably just because I hated it in Chapter 5 Season 1 and rarely used it, but I don't know what it was this season. I tried it a few games, and it very quickly became my main weapon outside of shotguns. Like, i drop a gold Thunderburst SMG oftentimes for, like, a green or blue Enforcer AR that only has a thermal scope and nothing else. Like, yeah, I can deal with a 4 times scope, but the thermal scope is definitely where it's strongest. The damage is high enough, my accuracy is good enough, to where I'm able to consistently put people down. And I do feel that it is significantly stronger in no builds, the meta that I play, compared to builds, so I can understand why a lot of people that mostly play builds hate it and think it's terrible, because it's just in a meta that doesn't suit it that well. Kind of like how the lever in a lot of metas has completely flopped, because the only meta that really suited the lever shotgun well was Chapter 2 Season 5, where it was Tack Charge Lever Dragon's Breath. And I wish we could go back to a meta like that that had balance, because, holy shit, like, back to some of the more negative things, I obviously already mentioned the cars, I mentioned the Nitro, or not Nitro, I mentioned the, uh, Magneto Gauntlets, wait, did I, yeah, I did mention the Nitro, or at least how it didn't change in no builds, but yeah, I cannot, that is... Sorry, let me collect myself real quick. What am I going to say? Say it now. Okay. The Nitro was completely unbalanced and competitive. Now, I do still think it wasn't that balanced in builds or no builds. But, at the same time, it wasn't something so inherently stupidly overpowered to where it became egregious in casual game modes. Yes, it was unbalanced, like I have said, but it definitely could have been a lot worse than it ended up being, especially after the nerfs. The Nitro was some, or I wouldn't even say sometimes, I'd say it was a mostly enjoyable feature because in those more casual lobbies that I'm in, it doesn't end up being as big of a deal because people aren't abusing it to the highest of its capabilities. However, one thing that was more egregiously broken, even after I think it was three sets of nerfs, was the Nitro Fist. Which... 
I really fucking hate those things. Like, the only reason I use them is because, well, one, they're broken. But the main reason why anyone uses them is because it's an infinite source of mobility, which I can understand. I like having infinite sources of mobility. Think of something like the Rocket Ram that had inherent downsides, was easy to hit, even if the landing attack was really powerful and annoying to deal with, if you got hit by it. Or the Katana. Another thing that was shockingly okay balanced, and yeah, it could get annoying if you got hit multiple times up close, but it wasn't too egregious. However, with the Nitro Fist, there was or not even was, there is so little lag in between each hit that it makes string together 150 plus damage ridiculously simple. And yes, the fact that it only has four uh, boosts in the thing makes it to where it's not as broken as it could be, but at the same time, it could, like, I don't like tackling subjects of could the, how broken could this thing be I'm more of a how broken is and was it person. Because even after the nerfs, the if, yeah, you don't do as much damage to structures anymore when doing the uppercut. But the amount of damage you pump out is still ridiculous. And for me, the big thing is it still does fall damage when you send someone flying with that. Now, I think 60 damage is good enough to where you don't need to add fall damage on top of that for the final launcher. It just becomes completely ridiculous because there is no counter to that if you didn't get lucky enough to get your own fists, and even if you did, they can chase after you, and if they have good aim after getting that advantage, there's a good chance that you can't really fight back at all. Like I said, like, multiple times, this season does have some good qualities, which is why I don't absolutely, which is why I don't think it's the worst season of all time, but every season has some redeemable factors. Like, even Chapter 2, Season 6, once you got past the makeshift, uh, once you got past the makeshift and primal levels and got the actual weapons... It was significantly more enjoyable, even with some of the stupid bullshit like the animals and the fire that would come from things like the bows or the fireflies. Despite being annoying, it still had some good qualities, and this season is much the same. A terrible season, a few good qualities, but so inherently broken and terribly balanced that it ended up becoming just a complete shit show the entire way through. And I really hope that Epic takes this as a lesson. Because next season is the most I've looked forward to a season, other than OG, of course, since... Let's see. Honestly, I'd say ever. I tried to think about it. There is no season other than season OG that I looked forward to more than next season. Because with the original Marvel season, Chapter 2, Season 4, being in my top three favorite seasons of all time, I really hope next season takes a hint from Chapter 2, Season 4 instead of these last three seasons. Because Chapter 5, Season 1 and 2 have been average and average okay but this season just unforgivably terrible at least in my opinion and if epic doesn't learn their lesson i'm not gonna be gone because i still have friends that get on and that's one of my only ways of communicating with them other than texting and i like having some verbal communication that's not just over a screen but with the direction Epic's going in, I can only hope that they fix the issues that they have to bring their community more together. Because the community has been getting torn apart by incredibly divisive decisions, and at the end of the day, both sides are left just as unhappy despite different things about the game being enjoyable to them. 
if Epic is able to strike that balance, I will be stoked. But if they're not able to, I can't say I'll be shocked. But we'll just see what happens from there. Terrible season, but I do have to give it like a 3 out of 10. Not much, but it's something. There are some enjoyable factors. So, Epic, please ride the momentum well into next season and don't fuck it up.